All right, here we go. We're going to finish up this lesson. We got an example to do first, and then another, let's see, a couple examples. So we got two examples, and then one more theorem, and then we will be finished. So it shouldn't, hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. If you uh, cooperate, pay attention, I don't have to stop every two seconds to tell the people that are talking right now. Right, as long as I don't have to do that, we could probably finish this fairly quickly. All right, so they have this slanting this way. Whoops, don't want that, want this. There we go. All right, and they, they put these lines that connects those uh, vertices. We talked about that yesterday. What are those called? A diagonal, very good. So Cabri's paying attention. So those are diagonals. Again, this is an example. It's the first example, so example one. All right, let's put a bunch of stuff in here that they tell us. Um, well, let's put some letters first. So A, B, C, D, and in the middle is E. All right. Here's the stuff that they tell us. This is what's given. In geometry, they use that a lot. Here's the stuff that they tell you. So AB is equal to 6.3. Yeah, this is the stuff they tell you, isn't it? Man, they tell you a lot of stuff. But there's still a lot of stuff that we can find. Why are we eating in here? Should be no eating. Barb, is that you? Put it away. It is. Put it away. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to see it. All right, let's keep going. So AE, they tell you, is uh, 4.2. Uh, BD, should be writing this down, 11.6. Okay, that's all the sides. These are line segments, okay? These are parts, could be part of the diagonal, could be the length of the sides. But we'll, we'll fill it in here in a second, all right? And now they tell you some angles. They tell you that angle ABC is 72 degrees. They tell you that angle ACD is 63 degrees. And one more thing, angle ABD is 41 degrees. Well, my goodness, they give you so much stuff. There's barely anything left to find, isn't there? Well, I'm sure there is plenty to find. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find uh, six different things. All right, so we're going to find DC. We're going to find EC, ED. And let's slide this over here. So part D is D angle DAB, DAB. Part E is angle ADC. And angle DAC. Well, my goodness. They give you a lot of stuff, they ask you for a lot of stuff. So what would you do first? If you had this problem right in front of you and nobody around you where would you start? Would you just crumble your paper up and throw it away? Would you walk away and play a video game? What would you do? Plug them in. That's right. Okay, let's put them in the picture, though. Okay, let's put them all in the picture. That's probably what you meant, right? So let's do that. So AB, where's AB? This one right there is what? 6.3. All right, AD, this is bottom one right here, is 8. AE, hmm, that's this little one right here, okay? From A to E, it's 4.2. Uh, BD, where's BD? That's that whole thing. Is 11.6. Hmm, how am I going to show that? Let's do one of these things. Does that make sense? 11.6. So that whole thing is 11.6. All right, so that's all the sides. I'll tell you what, let's not deal with the angles just yet because it gets a little messy. Let's just find the, the lengths of the sides that they want you to find. So let's find DC. These should be fairly easy. 
Where is DC? It's this one right here, all right? So let's take a look at it. What did we remember yesterday about parallelograms? What is true about the opposite sides of a parallelogram? They're equal to each other, exactly right. So without doing any math whatsoever, you should be able to do part A. And what is it? What's, what's length CD equal to, or DC? 6.3, exactly right, all right? Because the sides that are opposite are equal. So if that's 6.3, this one is 6.3. Super easy. Everybody in here should be able to see that. If you don't get it right on a quiz or test, you're just not paying attention. Really. Would you agree with that? Do I have a second on that? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't get this right on a quiz or a test, you're just not paying attention. So this side and this side are equal. So if this side is 6.3, this side is 6.3. So I'm going to write that down right there. What about EC? Where's EC? That's this little bit, whoops. That's this little bit right here. Here's E, here's C, that little bit right there. So what do you think? Is it? Why is it 4.2? Because it looks equal. <laughs> what did we say yesterday about the diagonals? What do the diagonals do? The very last thing we talked about, look in your notes. What is the very last thing we said? The diagonals do what to each other? They bisect each other. That's right. So that means, everybody watch, that means from A to E, thank you, is the same as from E to C. Everybody see that? So if it's being bisected, if it's being split in half, and I know the one half, right, I know half of it, what's the other half got to be? It's got to be the same thing. So EC has to be 4.2. Okay. That might be just a little harder to see than the two sides being equal, okay? But it's kind of the same, isn't it? If I know one, I know the other. Now this one's a little bit trickier, but it's the same idea as part B. It's the same idea. Diagonals bisect each other. But look what they give you this time. They ask you for ED. So they ask you from here to here. But what do they give you? They don't give you the other segment. They give you the whole entire thing, right? So if they give you the whole entire thing, how do I find this part of it? I divide it by two, exactly right. And um, if you divide that by two, it, I'll do the math for you, it's 5.8. So the math would be, so far, this is the only math we've had to do, isn't it? 11.6 divided by two. You can put it into a calculator if you wanted to. All right, but that's 5.8. We good so far? Yeah, super easy so far, would you agree? Now they didn't ask you, but what if they asked for BC? Look at it, give me an answer quick. What is BC? It's eight, that's right. Because BC and AD, they're opposite sides, they're equal to each other as well. Okay, but they, they didn't ask for it, but they could have, couldn't they? All right, they could have asked for BC. All right, let's do the angles now. I'll tell you what, since we're done with the sides, I'm just gonna get rid of all this mess because that could get, it gets a little ugly with all that stuff in there. I don't think we need any of the sides to do the angles. All right, now it looks a little cleaner, doesn't it? All right, let's do some angles. I'll tell you what, let's put this in a different color just to make it look a little nicer. And what do they tell us? They tell us that angle ABC is 72 degrees. Where's ABC? ABC, that's this whole big angle right there. Not this little bit, not this little bit, but the whole entire angle to that parallelogram. It's, they tell you it's, what did I say it was? 72. All right, so that is 72 degrees. So I mark that. Everybody should be able to do that. And that's a, this is what everybody should be doing. All right, if you have a problem like this, put all the stuff on your picture. If you have a test, remember I said you can write on the front of the test that I give you. I just don't look at it for answers, okay? But if you have a picture like this on a quiz or a test, absolutely write right on the test, right on the picture, okay? Put the stuff in there that you need to know, all right? I don't, it's fine if you write on the front of the test. I don't care if you mark it all up. I'm just not looking at the front of the test for your answers. I'm just looking at your answer sheet for the answers, okay? But yeah, you can write all over it. So look at this, ACD, where's that? There's A, there's C, there's D. So that's this little one right here. And that's what? 63 degrees. You got it? And then one more, A, B, D. A, B, D. That's just, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this in a different color. 
So ABD is this one right there, that green one. And that's how much? 41 degrees. So that's the stuff that they give you. They give you those three angles right there. And that they're going to ask you to find three other angles. All right, so let's see what we're trying to find. We're trying to find DAB. Well, where's DAB? There's D, there's A, there's B. Let's do it in a different color. I'll do all the ones we're going to find in yellow. So DAB, I'm trying to find that angle right there, that whole entire angle. So I could do this without knowing anything about the diagonals. The diagonals don't bother me at all on this one, but there's a relationship. We talked about this yesterday. There's a relationship between angle B, this whole angle B, and this whole angle A. What was that relationship? A lot of people look at it and say, ah, they're equal to each other, but just look at them. Is there any way that this yellow one is gonna be equal to that blue one? They're supplementary, right, but they're not gonna be equal, are they? Everybody see that? Because this is obtuse and this is acute. There's no way in the world they're going to be equal to each other. It's impossible. But they are supplementary, which means what, Neil? They do what? They add up to 180. So what's my math to solve for that yellow angle? You got it. 180 minus 72. And what's that? It's 108, right? Because that's a 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. All right, it's 108. It's in degrees, so we'll put the degree symbol. Everybody good? 108. All right, let's keep going. ADC, angle ADC. Where's ADC? A, D, C. Without doing any math whatsoever, how can I find... I'm going to put a double thing there. Uh, let's do this. Let's change colors. So what is that angle right there? without doing any math whatsoever. You should be able to look at it and tell me what that angle is. 72, why 72? Because what do we know about the opposite angles of a parallelogram? They're equal to each other, that's right. So look, where did I look? If I got this angle right here, I could do it two ways. One way, I don't have to do any math. A second way, I would have to do some math. What would you rather do? No math or math? No math, me too, okay? So look, this angle and this angle are equal to each other. So if this angle is 72, what's this angle? It's 72. Yes? All right, that was that easy. No math. Okay, angle DAC, let's change colors. Hmm, what color haven't I used? This orange color, will that show up? Let's use this lighter orange color. All right. All right, let's use that one. It's kind of close to yellow, but you can see the difference, can't you? Yeah, it's kind of orange. All right, we got to find this angle. That's angle DAC. There's D, there's A, there's C. So that's the angle we're trying to find right there. So, hmm, what do you think? Add up the other, these two? What other two? Give me, give me numbers. C and B? C and D? Hmm. No, nah, I wouldn't do that. I see something. I could find I could find this angle. Watch this. I'm running out of colors. Let's use this. What color haven't I used? I've used all of those. This blue. It's kind of a dark blue. I don't know if I'll be able to see it. But watch. Everybody look. Do you see this angle right here? That dark blue one? Okay. What's equal? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this light blue for a reason. See that light blue angle right there? Without doing any math, I could tell you what that light blue angle is equal to. Any ideas? 63. Why? Give me a good reason why. Because look, close, it's not, we, it, we don't use the word opposite. What do we use? So here's this angle right there. That's 63. Agreed? Right, that one right there. See my parallel lines? This parallel line, this parallel line. So that's 63. What is this one right here? It's this one right here, isn't it? So they're not opposite. They're alternate interior angles. Very good. Okay. Remember that from way back? Yep. Alternate interior angles are equal. Did, did you see that? 
All right, so there's my transversal, there's my parallel line. If this is 63, what's this one right here? That's 63. So now, how do I find this uh, orange angle right there? If I know the whole thing is 108 and that part's 63, what's the math? What's, what's the math? What do I do for the math? That's it. I would go 108 minus what? 63. All right, and that's what, 45? And so that angle right there is 45 degrees. You could. It's not the only way to do it. To me, it's the easiest way to do it, all right? Because I'm just looking at this. I'm like, oh, that's 63. Parallel lines cut by transversal, that's 63, yeah? And I, I've, that's 108. 108 minus 63. One little math problem, just a little subtraction. And there you go. This is the kind of stuff that you're going to see where? On a test, quiz, homework. Okay. So this is really important that you know how to do this because you're definitely going to see stuff like this. All right? I kind of like this. I, I, I like it when they give you stuff, they ask you for stuff, then you're like, okay, what did we just learn? This is equal to this. This adds up to this. All right? I think it's kind of cool. But I'm a nerd, so that's all right. Nothing wrong with being a nerd, right? Uh, let's go back to white. All right, one more example, and then we have a theorem, and then we'll be done. So, whoops, I don't want that. I want this. I'm going to do that. Let's make this look like that. And then... I'm tilting this a little bit. Actually, I don't have to go that far. I hope you guys are trying to pay attention. If you guys would put as much energy in your learning as you do your joking around with your dumb jokes, you guys would do pretty good. All right, I think, oh, one more thing. This one down here. I think that's everything. Yep, that's everything they give you. Now, you knew what was coming, right? I mean, you had, you had problems like this where they just give you numbers. But what do they always do? After they give you problems with numbers, then they do what? Then they make them so you have letters, you got to do some algebra, right? You solve for X, solve for Y, plug it back in. You know they're going to do this, didn't you? And sure enough, they did, all right? So you should be used to this. Let me just scooch this over just a little bit. Give me some room to write. Okay. All right, so um, they say find each angle and each side. So that's what they're asking you to do. Let's write that down. Find each angle. How many angles are there? Four and each side. And each side. And there's four sides, okay? Ooh. The math on this is a little trickier than it normally is, all right? But just bear with me, all right? I'm going to teach you maybe it really shouldn't be new to you. It should be something you learned in Algebra 1, but I've learned that not everybody learned the stuff they were supposed to in Algebra 1. So anyway, here we go. Let's do the sides first. Let's forget about the angles. Now, I'll tell you what, let's do the angles. The angles are easier. It's actually easier to do the angles. So let's find the angles first, okay? Um, so I want to find angle J. I want to find angle K. Oops, angle K. Find angle M. Find angle L. Nice thing about this, this is a parallelogram, so if I find one of them, right, if I find this one, then what's L? Same thing. If I find M, what's K? Same thing. So really, I'm only finding really how many? Two, okay, as far as doing the work. Everybody got that? 
All right, so let's do it. So what can I do? This is 7a degrees, this is 13a degrees. Do I set them equal to each other? Are they equal? Angle J and angle M. No, they're not, okay? What are they? They're consecutive angles, so they, meet, they must be supplementary, okay? So what's my math? What do they do? They add up, so 7a plus 13a, what do they add up to be? 180. All right, so this math is really simple. All right, this was an easy one, I promise. So that's 20A equals 180, divide by 20. All right, so A is, look, the zeros cancels. You should be able to do all this without a calculator. What's 18 divided by two? It's nine. Is that my answer though, A is nine? No, I gotta plug it back in, don't I? All right, so A is nine. So now I just got to plug them back in and find the angles. So let's plug it into this one right there. So what would I get? Seven what? Times nine, which is seven times nine? 63. It's not 9D because the zero is canceled. So see that? That zero cancels with that zero. And then so it's 18 divided by two, it's nine. It's not 90, it's nine. Got it? Seven times nine is 63. So angle J is what? 63 degrees. What's another angle that I know without doing any math now? Angle L, that's also 63 degrees, okay? Now I could find this two different ways. I could go 13 times nine, couldn't I? All right, but I don't know what 13 times nine is off the top of my head, but I could also do what? If I know that this angle is 63, then how could I find this angle? Just 180, right, 180 minus what? 63, and that's 117, is that right? Yep, so that's 117 degrees. So uh, angle M is 117. Now, how can I find angle K without doing any math at all? So same thing as this. So that's also 117 degrees. That's kind of nice about parallelograms, isn't it? The opposite things are equal to each other. So once you find one, the opposite is the same. Everybody good? All right. But what else do we have to find? We found each angle. Now we got to find what? Each side. All right. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but the math is a little bit different. Let me, um, well, let's just set it up and then I'll push it down, give us some room to write, okay? So what are we gonna do? I know this side, what's true about these two sides? Yeah, they are parallel, but as far as solving for X though and solving for Y, they're the same, they're equal to each other, right? They have the same measurement, okay? So they are equal to each other. So I could say what? X equals what? 2Y plus one. Now, here's a problem. Everybody look at this. A Little bit of a problem. Can I get X by itself? Can I get Y by itself just with that information? I can't because I have an X here and a Y here, right? I don't know, I can't solve for X or Y just with that. So I need another equation. Where are we gonna get the other equation? From this and this, okay? And what are true about these two? They're equal to each other. So I could write what? 2x equals 5y minus 2. What I'm going to do is, tell you what, let's just move this down. So I'm done with my geometry, basically. I'm going to have to plug them back in. All right, we'll do that in a second. But here's what we need to do. Maybe you did this in Algebra 1, maybe you didn't. It's called substitution. Do you remember doing substitution and elimination in Algebra 1? Does that ring a bell at all? It doesn't? Okay, well, I'm going to teach it to you. You ready? This is Algebra 1. So here we go. X is equal to 2Y plus 1, and this says 2X equals 5Y minus 2. Watch what we're going to do. Everybody watch. Judy, you're not paying attention. All right, I'm telling you, you're gonna have to pay attention. Sierra, get your head up. You gotta pay attention. This is not a time to put your head down. Absolutely not, all right? 
So watch very carefully. This x and this x represent the same number. This y and this y represent the same number, okay? So what we're going to do, since I kind of know what x is equal to, I don't know exactly what it's equal to, but I kind of know. What is x in this situation? It's, two, it's not 2. What's x equal to? 2y plus 1, right? So x is equal to 2y plus 1. Remember, this x right here represents the same number as this x right here. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take what x is equal to and do what to it? Plug it in for that x right there. Okay? This is something you probably, it sounds like anyway, you probably haven't done before. But that's called substitution. I'm going to take what x is equal to, plug it in, or substitute it in for the x in the other equation. And we've done that before. Like, what if I said, okay, I do the work and x is 3. What do I do with 3? I plug it in, right? You with me on that? Okay, so we've done that kind of stuff before, but this time we're plugging in something with another letter. We're used to just plugging in just a regular number, right? So what are we going to do here? We're going to go 2 times. How do I show times in algebra? I'm going to put a parentheses. You could put a dot. In this situation, I'm putting a parentheses because I got two things. I got two things that I'm multiplying by 2. You see it? So what am I going to put? 2 times x. What is x? 2y plus 1. So I'm going to put 2y plus 1. Equals what? I'm just going to rewrite that second equation. There's my 2x, right? Equals what? 5y minus 2. Now check this out. Now I have one equation with just one letter, with one variable. Everybody see it? Here's something that I didn't learn until I was in college. I don't think I ever had a teacher in high school ever tell me this. But if you have two variables that you have to solve for, two different variables, an x and a y, you can't just have one equation. You have to have how many equations? If you have two variables, you need what? Two equations. What if you had three variables, x, y, and z? How many equations would you need? I'd need three equations. Do you hear me on this? Two equations, you need, or sorry, two variables, you need two equations. Three variables, you need three equations, and so forth. Four, four, five, five, and so on. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But now look what we have. We just have one equation and we got one variable. All right, so I can solve for this now. You remember this. I know you did this because we did this in this year when we did that algebra review earlier this year. What is this called? Distributive property. So let's distribute. 2 times 2y is 4y plus 2 times 1 is 2. And that equals 5y minus 2. Let's get the y's on the same side. Again, we've done this this year. Minus 4y minus 4y. Why did I put it on the right-hand side? Why didn't I put that 5y on the left-hand side? Yeah, because of the negative. I didn't want a negative, okay? I mean, I could have them all on the same side if I put the 5y over here, but I just didn't want a negative. That's why I put the, it on the right-hand side. Some people just always love putting the variable on the left-hand side, and they do it every single time. That's fine. It works. I kind of like having my variable come out to be positive. That's why I did that, okay? So now my y is on the right-hand side, so what am I going to get rid of here? This minus 2. How do I get rid of a minus 2? I add a 2, so I do that to both sides. Let's see. This cancels out. This cancels out. Let's add these up. 2 and 2, 4. 5y minus 4y It's 1y or just y. So what's y equal to? It's equal to 4. So I did all that work just to solve for y. Let's go back up here. So what did I say y was? It was 4. So what, am I, what do I want to do? I want to find these, uh, I want to find these variables, okay, these, these sides. Let's do this one first. Let's, let's plug it into this. So y is equal to 4. So if I plug it into this one right here, what is it? It's 2 times 4 plus 1. Do that in your head. 8 plus 1 is 9. So what's the length of ml? It's 9. That's right. So this side right here is 9. So what's x going to be then? What's that side going to be? That's also going to be 9. That's right. So that side's going to be 9. Yes? So now I know what x is and I know what y is. y is 4, x is 9. So I could do this. I could put it in for this. 2 times x. What did I say x was? 
9. So 2 times 9 is 18. I'll just show you so you don't... 2 times 9 is 18. So this side right here, JM, is 18. So without any math, I don't even have to plug anything in now. If this side is 18, what's KL? That's also 18. And if you wanted to do it, you could do it. Watch. 5 times Y, would we say Y was? 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 2 is what? 18. It does work, doesn't it? Everything works. So these two sides are 18. These two sides are 9. Now you have every side, you got every angle, and you're good to go. That's not too bad, is it? The substitution was maybe a little different than you've seen before, but that makes sense, doesn't it? If x equals this, you just think of take that, plug it in for this x, distribute, solve for y, and then you're good to go after that. This right here was the hardest part. It was just the algebra. It wasn't even the geometry. The geometry is simple. The geometry is just the two opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. That's all the geometry is. And the two opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. All right? That's the geometry. Okay. One more thing, and then we'll quit. This one's super easy. Don't even have any examples or anything for this one. Um, let's draw... I'm going to draw three parallel lines, if I can grab this thing. If I can move it. Come on. Let's just grab one. There we go. All right, everybody's watching this, right? And let's make this like this. Hope you're watching. Some people think we're finished, but we're not finished. Got this, and I've got this. Actually, I want to make this, I want to stretch this out a little bit. All right, here we go. Everybody's watching. We're not finished. I don't know how many times i got to say that. Here we go. If these three, um, I didn't want to make that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, here we go. I got three parallel lines. I know that these two white lines right there, or these three white lines right there, are all parallel to each other, all right? What if I knew, uh, let's put some letters in here, might as well, J, K, L, and P, Q, R. P, Q, R. All right, here's the situation. I got three parallel lines, and then I got these two transversals cutting them, all right? If I knew that J, K, was equal to KL. Everybody see that? If I knew that, all right, they told me that they're equal to each other. Let's just say that this is 5 and this is 5. Okay, they're equal to each other. What do you think might be true about PQ and QR? That Okay, well, it's not the same thing, but they will be equal to each other. Okay, so these will also be equal to each other. That does not mean that PQ and JK are equal to each other. Everybody hear that? So I'm going to put two tick marks here and two tick marks here. So this does not mean that PQ is also 5 and QR is also 5. That is not what we're saying. But we are saying that these two segments are going to be equal to each other. All right. So if these two segments are equal to each other, then these two are equal to each other. If you have this situation, what's our situation? Three parallel lines, transversals, this is equal to this. So this is equal to this. That's basically what it's saying. All right. So I think I asked you to get started on yesterday's homework, but I didn't officially assign it. So here it is, officially assigned. So it's section uh, 6.2. We are doing uh, 1 through 17. And you're also throwing in a couple extras, 21 to 24, four extras. There it is right there. That's your homework. And you got an extra day. Tomorrow we got off the whole day, so you got three-day weekend. So, but try to get it done tonight, all right? You know you're not going to do it on your day off, all right? So try to get it done tonight. Still a school night. Get it done tonight. Turn it in Monday, and you'll be good to go. Everybody good? All right. Enjoy your long weekend.